everybody, it's me, Jacob Rewind. Ace Man's going to get a soda. So that's what I'm dealing with. How are you today? You, I, it's not alive. <laughs> I thought there was no nothing left, but there was one sody pop left. Okay, what's up? One sody pop. Okay, so, so this, this is what pop. show is this? It's the Always Sunny in Philadelphia. No, that's the show we're watching. The show we're doing is It's Always Sunny in Hell, okay. which is about the show It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, but uh, we like it the show, and also maybe they're dead the whole time. It's the whole time. Most of the time. Yeah, and what is hell? Is that a person? We've never really actually gotten into that. Like, yeah, <laughs> not everybody believes in hell. It's like, uh, so like when you die, theoretically, do you believe in hell? Um, I, it's complicated. <laughs> Fair enough. It's very complicated. Me, mm. yeah, it's like, you know, afterlife, consciousness, TV. <laughs> Leave that all up to the big wigs in Washington. <laughs> We're just here to like Charlie Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that we should get into the questions from last time, right? That we posed in the pinned comment on the last episode. So... The the first one is, what's your favorite type of snack food? I said, hard to pick, but I'll say potato chip. I said, uh... He didn't write that. I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know we were doing that. We didn't even, that episode hasn't even got up yet. I, uh, in that I episode, wrote, though, um, I was like, we'll get it in the next episode. That we'll, you're right. We'll uh, our oh, man, I can't pick just one. What is it? What's your favorite type of snack food? No, that's my answer. Oh, man, oh. I can't pick just one. No way, mine too. My answer for that question <laughs> is hell yeah. My answer for that question is good reference. <clears throat> okay, so the next question is, what's your fave sitcom? I said Sunny or Parks and Rec. I answered Sunny or Inside Job. Interesting. I thought that uh, yeah. uh, what we do in the shadows would probably be the Ooh, the or. What we do in the shadows is also really good, but yeah. uh, I love. I, I don't know. It's like uh, rewatched a few episodes of Inside Job, and I was like, man, I really love what they're trying to do because it's like there's like a spectrum of like how much is it like self-contained and how much is it like plot and development and character. Mm -hmm. I think always. I think. Uh, Always Sunny is more on the side of self-contained and it works for Always Sunny. Yeah. I think what we do in the shadows does a brilliant job of like uh, walking the tightrope, having their cake and eating it too by doing this really brilliant, like every season kind of has an arc and the status quo is always changing and it's awesome. Inside Job is, always, is all the way over here on that side of the spectrum where it's like, very much like yes this is a sitcom but at its core it's very much about character and plot development and the status quo isn't it's not about the status quo changing it's just that like that seems like what the show was yeah. leading towards was like eventual resolution for every arc you said like inside every season have arc and i probably should have put this on there but i i forgot that it existed uh curb your enthusiasm ah yeah. curb your enthusiasm you made me remember and yes that would be one of my other favorite sitcoms uh next question is what movie were you most afraid of as a kid you go first on this one if you have one off the top my of answer the was for Rango, but and then in parentheses the snake part <laughs> My answer is The Exorcist purely because Ooh. of the fucking Ooh. the the fucking like jump scare videos back in the day where it was just the girl from The Exorcist's face. That shit terrified me and I was like I don't want to touch that movie ever. And I haven't. Yeah. I've never seen it. You've just seen the jump scare. I've image. just seen the jump scare image and like clips online and I'm like I'm good. No thanks. Yeah. I'd rather not. Mhm. Mm do you want to read off this next question? Yes, the last question is, would you bake in Kevin Games or leave James Hames? My answer is, I would bake in my James. My answer was, please God, don't let Kevin Bacon die. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, now we can finally get into the episode. This episode is Max Big Day, episode four of season. <laughs> so this episode is Max Big Break. It's the fourth episode of the sixth season. It's really good. Before we started doing a recording, I accidentally did a burp that was really funny to Ace Man, and we laughed about it for a long time. Oh, he's busted out the crackers. Oh, nuts. Oh, jeez. Okay, I better not let any dead air show up. So anyways, in this episode, there's an iconic gag where... Uh, th so, I think the first thing that we have to point out about this episode is that the A plot is very much about Max Big Break, but the B plot is very relevant to what we're doing here. Dennis and Dee start their own podcast, and it's... What I found really funny about that plot line, and I can't tell if it was ahead of its time or just really stupid is that Dennis and Dee are just talking, and they find their conversation humorous. So they're like, yeah, let's do a podcast. It's just us talking. Like, there's no pitch or idea or plot, really. It's just them talking and Frank in the room. That's the idea. Well, the setup is that Frank's stereo is busted in his car. Yeah. And he just well, no, he started it's, recording it's just them that he likes tape. them. They jib jab. Yeah. He's not recording them on tape and playing. Is radio doesn't work? My brother in Christ, at the beginning of the episode, he says this. Well, no, he just says, I, I like to listen to them on my on my drive. They jib jab. He, he says, say stereo's broken. my stereo's busted. Oh, okay. And so I've been recording them and playing it in the car. It's very interesting. He's like, he says that something, something like they that. They jib jab. Yeah. Okay. I didn't clock that. Goofy. Goofy um, in the brain. But. Yeah. The iconic gag is they start recording. Dennis proposes a question to Dee. She doesn't answer. And Danny is munching on crackers. And he just says, dead air. And it's, dead uh, air. that's what it sounds like. <laughs> I have a discord button for that. Cause and then, the, uh, yeah. Matt or uh, uh, Dennis and Dennis and D also introduce a soundboard to the mix yeah. and they've got all kinds of sound effects and they have fun with yeah. that and it's great. But uh, yeah, I don't know. And you know what? After watching that podcast, that fictional podcast within the show, mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I think our podcast is more gooder than Dennis and D's podcast yeah. that doesn't exist. Yeah. We got recorded onto a taped over. The only downside is that mix. we don't have Danny. We don't have. Yeah, uh, yeah. If we had Danny, that'd be good. But uh, hey, even the only Sunny Pod couldn't get Danny. You have to be they chained up in the time. in the corner of your room or something to, for that to work. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'd have, find him, catch him, exploit him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that sounds like a Pokemon mod. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my notes are uh, the first one is. We got to the scene of Charlie and Mac in the street, and Charlie is trying yes. to teach Mac how to shoot the how to the, hockey. How to hockey, and I just wrote down, "I love when Charlie is the straight man," and it's really yeah. only whenever it's Charlie and Mac because they just yeah. have this like back and forth of like occasionally, like they'll they'll each individually slip into the straight man and then the goofball like back mm. and forth in the same scene. Yeah. Like But they have a good banter. Yeah, they do. But like but Charlie being the well of knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm Very fun. Cause like, yeah, they both kind of bring some funniness to the table. Like this is also the kind of introduction of I really this di probably my favorite gag. Is it my favorite gag? No. The hands down the best gag in the episode is by the way, we are in our cricket arc. Yes. Uh and uh they bring cricket on as a guest in the fictional podcast. And the best gag in the episode is when Frank gives uh Bates cricket with the promise of chicken and instead gives him lemons. And uh, cricket at least let me have the crackers. Like, <laughs> yeah. At least let me have the crackers. It's so stat. Like he's so <laughs> depraved. All he wants is the crackers, but yeah. And he's, um, yeah, so come funny. on, they're lemons. You suck on them. <laughs> it's good for scurvy. <laughs> um, 
And he just goes on a crazy diatribe about a dog wanting to hump the scar on his neck. And then he sucks the lemon and goes. I remember oh, him sorry. also eating a saltine and then just the crust of the like the crumbs of the saltine being stuck to his lips. And he's like, ah, dry, it's dry. <laughs> like, I don't know really? why I remember okay. that, but I do. Maybe it happened in a dream. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. But maybe close your eyes and try to remember it. <laughs> what would you would you pick up? What would no. you would you would you pick up over there? I see. It's nothing. Okay. Oh oh yes 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 yes. So before before we started recording, um, Jake went to go get a, dr- uh, a drink. And I wrote down some things because I had a I had a mind moment, but I couldn't yeah, finish yeah, my, yeah, yeah. my little proposal. theorem. You had a proposal. I, I have a pro- 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 proposal. Okay. Um, I wrote down guests equal metaphor question mark. Also, Frank brings them on, which is a thing to note for that thing, right? So the guests are a metaphor in the theory for things that the character or like like possibly. Could be a, like showing the characters what they've done wrong to these people. Like Cricket is obviously homeless and they talk about him being homeless. Then a soldier, they talk about war. And then the waitress, they just make fun of her. They pour dirty dish soap on her, or yeah, dirty, dirty dish, dish water, water on her. Which she's a waitress, so that's like a little bit of a thing. Dirty dish water, she's a waitress. Something like that, right? Um, I can see those two points connected. But like... The thing about it is that the fucking characters don't get it at all. They don't – it's not like – this. it's presented in kind of like in my little hidden like looking at it too deep theorizing way. It's kind of like mm-hmm. um, A Christmas Carol where it's like, oh, it's showing you the ghost of Christmas past, present, and future, right? Mm-hmm. Also, funny ding sound effect. Uh, <laughs> like um, but – the the thing is like, what if it was Christmas Carol, but Ebenezer Scrooge? A Christmas didn't... Carol, not a Christmas story. A Christmas Carol. Yes. Um, Christmas Carol, where Ebenezer Scrooge just didn't up. get it, and yeah. he played wacky sound effects and was just like, "Fuck you, God!" <laughs> like, "Fuck you, spirits." <laughs> My favorite fucking interpretation of a Christmas Carol. Yeah, not even the Muppets one. Um, yeah. That one's good. Yeah, dude, can we just talk about a Muppet's Christmas Carol? I like that Gonzo <laughs> is the narrator and Rizzo is his friend, and they're, like, throughout the whole show. Uh, Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Who's dude, your favorite Muppet? I completely dude. derailed your proposal. <laughs> so anyways, so you're, like, so what you're saying yeah. is that we're seeing Danny as a catalyst within the recording yes. of their fictional podcast, which can no. serve as a metaphor for his no, role no, no. in the show. Within the no? show... Like, because you've proposed that Danny might, or like that Frank He's might be sort of in on it and be a producer of producer, some kind, yeah. right? So I'm saying that he's playing that role of on the whatever yeah. showrunner side, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's like trying to do this like kind of metaphorical thing with this, but it doesn't. Yeah, it's, he's it doesn't doing it in a very. Work. He's doing it in a pretty literal <laughs> sense. Like he's literally yeah, right? like, let's bring a guest in to start shit. <laughs> yeah, but. I don't know. I just I had that brainage, and yeah, no. I just I just don't know how to tap it off. That's a good brainage, yeah. Because like the whole like like he he really like he <laughs> he this episode is the definition of seeing Frank as a messy bitch who lives for the drama. Like <laughs> he literally just brings in cricket, and and Dennis kind of spins it of like let's talk about homelessness, and Danny's like talk about how you two banged, and then. Uh, <laughs> And then he brings in Ben, and Dennis is like, oh, "Can we fucking talk about <laughs> Dennis's delivery?" It like like we'll revisit this, but can we take there it aside? There is a war going on. There's two, two wars. wars. <laughs> two wars. Now are these wars taking place on American soil? It's <laughs> like, very Charlie. I don't know why he yeah. did that. It's very funny. Yeah. It's very Charlie. Yeah. I don't know why my camera keeps refocusing. I need to download the driver. I've been told there's a driver I need to download from Adam my Driver. What? Why are you death staring right now? I don't. 
Oh, now you just look sad. Now you look very, like, suspicious. You're a sussy, sussy Adam guy. Adam Driver's pretty good looking. <laughs> Except for when he said the N-word in that one movie. A barn. She said it. He said a lot. <laughs> Stop! Stop with the bird with, <laughs> with the short birds. They're too good. Where did he do that? He did that? I didn't know he did that. In the movie Black Klansman, he says the mo- he's uh, he plays a racist. Like he plays a guy that infiltrates the clan. And he says the N word in the movie a bunch. That's that's a tough one. <laughs> that's like what that movie's about. Yeah. I haven't seen that movie personally, so I'm not going to comment on it. But uh, it's interesting. <sighs> okay. Um, also, if we're going to. Okay, but we I. So, yeah. If. The fictional podcast that's being produced, mm-hmm. which which they don't even have a name for. Yeah. Every time they start recording, he just says, hi, I'm Dennis, and we're Dennis and D. Reynolds. Like, they just say their names. Yeah. Like, that's the show. <laughs> <laughs> which is funny. But if that, if, if, what, if the fictional podcast they're producing is some sort of metaphor or analogy for the show as a whole, what do the sound effects represent? This is a sound effect. I think it represents the funny, goofy, wacky nature of the show. That's going to get real annoying to edit. (laughs) I'll 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 use desktop audio. It's fine. Uh, Okay. I don't know how any of this stuff works. Here. You see, I'm just a little kid. You know, I, I don't know how to. I don't know how to edit audio, none. I just know how to do funny bits for the podcast. Is that lemon juice? It's not bad. Oh, it's not bad. It's not good. It's not a drink. Not a drink, you say? What does he have? Oh, God. 100% lemon juice. That's a lot. Oh, my gosh. I think you just drank, like, all of what is in here. Yeah. That's nothing? Just nothing? I like it. Is Cricket just a little bitch? Probably. Is Cricket just a little bitch who can't take it? Man. Now, excuse me. I have to go off screen. (laughs) (laughs) I have to go vomit. One line delivery. I mentioned, we touched on the the best part of the episode is is Cricket sucking the lemon. Like, Mm -hmm. I feel like that's just, like, the truth. Yeah. A line delivery that really stood out for me is also when they're in the Charlie and mac are in the street practicing mm-hmm. the uh just learning the initial skills that curb is fucking insane the curb is i don't crazy. remember who we were we were in a call watching the show with someone and me and you were commenting on how insane the curb was. i think it was ollie saiku and i think he was no just it was like, season season was like i don't was it season season's like the curb is fine it's, fine. it's just curb that's insane that curb is insane <laughs> the curb, that curb is, crazy. is actually insane that curb like goes up to your knee. That's fucking insane. Yeah. But yeah. Um a line delivery that I really loved was Max. He like screws up the shot. And, or no, they're trying to figure it out. And and Charlie's like, bend over, haunch over. And he's like, You look so stiff, you're like a G.I. Joe. And and Mac is just <laughs> Charlie says, Touch your toes. He's like, oh, what am I, a gymnast, dude? <laughs> like, it's very cute. I liked it. Um, and this isn't a line, it's more, uh, a mime, but they're talking about how they can make their entrance better, up the production value of their entrance, and Charlie proposes wearing a hockey wig, and he's like, oh yeah, of course you'll be wearing the duster, maybe you should be wearing a wig, and Max's like, a wig? I don't know, and Charlie just proposes like, oh yeah, dude, a nice wig? <laughs> he does like a little hair toss, it's very cute. Um, 
the whole thing of like Mac going out on the ice and going out. It's like it is like dream sequence because he in real the life dream sequence. In reality, he fucking falls on his face and passes out. Yes. But in the dream sequence, he fucking goes like around the thing. He goes up to the guys and he's like, he, he pulls out the, the cassette or the tape, right? And the guys are like, whoa, what's this? The future radio, you jabronis. <laughs> jabronis. Cool, man. Cool word. <laughs> cool word. <laughs> you like that one? It's great. I like that a good deal. Oh, I brought this up before, but the vocabulary of the characters is really fun for me. Fortnite battle pass. Okay, okay, bud. I just okay. Hit- <laughs> <laughs> Man, sound effects are funny. <laughs> I feel like if I say one more thing, it's going to happen again. Oh, <laughs> but I like the book. Voca- <laughs> 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 really fast. I like no, the. What were, you, what were you saying? What were you I saying? I like the vocabulary of the characters. It's very interesting mm-hmm. to me because it's like. Yes, they're a they're a crew of friends, right? They're a group of friends. So you'd have like some shared vernacular, but they they kind of don't, but kind of do at the same time. I don't know how to explain it. Mm-hmm. Like Jabroni that's the thing. is something that Mac introduces in this episode because Charlie hasn't heard it before. So I'm assuming that hasn't really been said that much in the sh- in the past in the show. Well, that's what I like it is that they have. There's this idea of, like, there's a group vocabulary, Mm -hmm. but there's a logical consistency to it of, like, this is a new introduction to Mm -hmm. the group vocabulary. He says it multiple times within the episode. It works for me. I like Idiots and Savages is a Reynolds thing. Oh, yeah. Like, fucking, just, I don't know, just all those little little funnies are great. Mm -hmm. I love it. Something that Danny says one time in one episode is like, oh, no, he's a, he's a, he has a couple of really, really good lines where he's like, mm. man, that chick was berserk or like my head is swimming right now. Like that, like kind of little yeah. off things is really fun and like very frank. I love shit like that. What is it? How does he describe Gail the snail? Yeah, that's the, that, that berserk. Yeah. Berserk. Yeah. Yeah, Because it's after. They yeah, like yeah, yeah. just did hand stuff or whatever the fuck. Yeah, she's just mashing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm giving Frank a handy under the table. You're you're just mashing it now. <laughs> oh. All right, I I got nothing left on this. This is a good episode, but like. It's a good episode. I wouldn't call it a great episode if we're getting into ranking department. Yeah. I would give it like a... I love the ending of the cold open. I always enjoy a perfectly cut off scream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That scream there's is a lot of... wine delivery for me. Mm-hmm. Um... There's a couple understated gags that I really like that like go the extra mile for me like in the opening after they win the contest as they're winning the contest i like the transition of dennis being like holy shit they got on to mac going like holy shit we got on to the hosts being like don't swear <laughs> <laughs> and then i like after they've won mac dennis being like hey can we get our phones back oh yeah yeah and they like toss all the phones back i like that <laughs> um it's uh... also d is um or Mad about the using up of her minutes, which is a funny mm. little thing about the show that just like, like a funny just little, little dating, funny little episode. dating of the of the episode yeah. in the season. Because you know, mm-hmm. I know they that was like flip phones. Obviously, it like dates it right. by that alone. Yeah. But like minutes, yeah. wow, <laughs> you minutes. know, like yeah, yeah. Oh my god, bro. Is that um, still a thing? It probably is, but only like the yeah, elderly. Yeah, for certain plans. Yeah. Man. Um. God. Max. <sighs> big break. 
I don't know. There's nothing exceptional about it, but there's nothing offensive about it. I, for me, it's like a solid, like a fiver episode. I would say it's a five point five, probably a six, just because like whenever it stand, whenever it has standout moments, it like it stands out. Like the the whole thing with cricket and just the podcast parts of the episode in particular stand out a lot to me. Yeah, yeah. Just the whole like that's the training the, montage I, is right good. This is the thing is that the the title of the episode is centered around the A plot, but it feels like a B plot. But the B plot is more memorable. Yes. Think, the B plot haul. is 100% Them more dumping memorable. the bucket of dirty water on the waitress is <laughs> fucking so maniacal. fucking sad. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um... If you would never want that to happen again, please call 420-696 Sunny Spelt Wrong. That's 420-696 Sunny Spelt Wrong. I actually remember how many numbers go in the <laughs> That's so mean. Wow. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man. That's so <laughs> oh, the worst part is I was looking at my camera and you couldn't see any of it on camera. Yeah. I got crumbs everywhere. That was not worth it. Why am I doing this? Why am I still talking? Uh,